everybody, I'm Allie and welcome to Gertrude Steiner Designs blog and today I'm going to be working with a whole whack of digital stamps. Come and let me show you. In my editing program I brought in a whole whack of digital stamps and sized them up to make my little scene here. I thought we have so many cute digitals, why not pair them all together and create a scene for a birthday? So I looked through all the digital stamps and these are the ones that I found. So starting with Birthday Bear, we have Coffee Mouse. This is our free one right now, make sure you take advantage of that. I have Cat with Balloons. This is a bunny from the Easter Bunnies Digital Bundle. This is the Bunny with Carrot and the Penguin with Heart. So they're all available to you in digital form. Let's get coloring. As you can see, I took advantage of my color printer and I actually uh, left a blue box in behind all of my digital images. And I also want to say that I used the grass from the Easter Bunny's digital bundle as well. Um, I'm just trying to cut down on a little bit of coloring. It's a fairly involved uh, scene, so I want to help myself out a little bit. So we're going to start off with the grass and we're going to work that first and then I'll work on the critters. So I'm going to go off screen, do our grass, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about coloring all of our little critters. So uh, just a quick review of my grass here. I started with a YG01 and I put down a base coat and then I went in and added the next color which is YG05 and just kind of started darkening up the background. I also used YG13 and my darkest color is YG17. So I used all of those to make either brush strokes into grass or shadows or just um, blending that green. I wanted it to be very simple and not take away from all those fun little critters. So I just made it super simple, easy, done. Okay, let's go on to our critters. I think I'll start with the little bunny. We actually have two bunnies. So I will um, actually do one bunny, one color, and we'll do the second bunny something different. I'm starting off with a Y1, or sorry, W1. I think I'm gonna make him kind of whiter looking, not totally white. So basically all I'm using my W marker for is to add just where the shadows are gonna be. Um, normally I would pick a direction of light and work from there. Um, I'm not gonna be specific. Um, I don't think it really matters in this image. There's so much going on that I'm just gonna do color because I want a color and I want this to be a fun and happy card, not only for the recipient, but for me coloring it. So, yeah. I'm not going to be picky today about the location of where my light, is, light source is acting with my images. I'm just going to color because I love to color. Um, if you're wondering why there's um, spots on the images that I have tape on, it's just for um, copying purposes. I don't want anybody to um, copy these images from a screenshot, so I tend to cover things up until I actually get something fully colored and then I will do a full reveal. So if you're wondering what those funny little pieces of paper are, that's exactly what they are. I'm gonna come back and do the sign later um, because I'll do my critters first and then I'll go and do all the party accents, the sign, the balloons, the cake, um, that kind of thing. So I'm going to do it last because I want it to coordinate somehow with whatever color scheme I decide for those. And uh, so I'm going to make it easy on myself. So there's our W1. I am going to go with a W3 just to add just a tiny bit uh, more darkness in some places. I'm gonna put a little bit here. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath the sign. 
and I'm gonna do just in between his feet a little bit more on his head a little on the ear and a little on these ears like I said this is supposed to be fun and I'm gonna make it so here we go I'm gonna add just a tiny touch to his eyes that just makes his eyes um, drop back and appear to be more inset into his, his face if you're wondering what I'm doing there all right he felt cute all right let's give him some pink ears and pink nose I'm gonna start out with an R20 it's my go-to color and I'm just gonna use a flicking motion for the inside of the ears so that the end points are feathered. There we go. I'm just go over one more time, just deepen that a little bit on his nose. And I'm gonna add um, color around his pupils too. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll go I'm gonna go BG eleven. It just it adds a little bit more whimsy to their faces. And his eyes are so adorable that, I mean, why not add color, right? Okay, so we have our white little bunny. Let's go on to color our other little bunny here. I love that carrot. It's so stinking cute. Um, I think I'll go maybe a light shade of brown. Um, I'm going to start with a E42. Again, I'm not being perfect. I'm just gonna have fun and you know what that's that's what card making is all about it's not about perfection it's about learning and loving what you do so take the time um, to investigate videos and search the webs for inspiration um, if there's a stamp set that you love like if you're like me I love critters so those are the stamps that I tend to be drawn to so if that's what you're drawn to, then start there, especially for digital images. I mean, it's, it is awesome being able to pick them out of the shop. And then 10 seconds later, you know, once you've made your payment, they're in your inbox and away you go. It's that's digital. Digital ones are awesome like that because it's instantaneous gratification of images especially when they're so adorable like this or if you're needing something like a specific theme like um, birthday or or you're looking for a theme for a birthday for instance you need something with a train or you need something for a baby shower um, digital images are where it's at yeah just makes everything so quick and easy and you can resize them to whatever you need so if you wanted just a single large bunny with a carrot blow them up yeah it's awesome so I'm just going in with details right now facial details and then I think we'll start adding a little bit of fur texture I'm going to leave his little belly white, I think. Yeah, because that would just be too cute, right? And then I'm just giving him some texture with some simple, simple flicking. Which I would go back up into his ears and add a little bit of that hair texture. Um, my marker is a little on the dry side, so it kind of works in my favor, actually, this time. Um, add some texture to his face, I'm trying to kind of go with um, directionality that I think his fur would sit. So, yeah, you can go back and forth, you can do some cross hatching, whatever floats your boat, and whatever kind of you like whatever texture I think we'll leave his little muzzle there I think we'll leave it white or at least lighter 
And Mickey's got a, he's got weight to match his belly. Go in and get his paws in here too. There. Like I said, coloring does not have to be perfect. Sometimes that effect of, oh, we got a little bit of carrot there. Um, leaving the effect of white space in there helps with the effect. All right, so I'm just taking my zero or my blender solution. And what it does is it pushes the ink back into the paper. So you may still have a little tiny bit there. You can always go back with your blender again and again and again, but realize that sometimes if you put too much down, it wicks outside that line, so be very, very careful. Um, we went from an E42, let's go a 43, because the 44 is a little bit too dark for my taste. And tiny bit of shading just so we can get a little bit of contrast between what's in front, what's in back. Put something under his scarf. That scarf is so stinking cute. We'll put a little bit of darkness under his paws and then we'll add just a bit um, for where he is behind our cute little penguin there. A little bit more underneath his chin. I think I'll just go in and feather an edge there. And do the same for his other ear. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. But isn't he adorable? I'll go in and just go around his eyes just to kind of push them back because they would be deeper on his face and then I'm just going to do a little bit of fur texture around there too just to kind of push that whole area back mm, not perfect but okay I'm going to go back to my excuse me my E42 here and I'm just going to Add a little bit more color just around that to push it all back. Okay, like I said, I'm going to come back and do the accents. Let's go on to, I don't know, let's do the penguin. Because he's sitting out there all alone. Let's do the dark part. I'm going to start with, I think I'm going to start with a C5. So, I'm going to put a base coat down first. I'm going to rotate my image because I just feel more comfortable flicking in a certain direction. So don't hesitate to do that to make it easier on yourself. Because some people have difficulty flicking in one direction. And you know what? That's okay. Because sometimes it's hard to flick in a direction where your hand is sitting uncomfortably. <laughs> I'm going to leave a tiny bit of a highlight kind of off on his head there. I'm going to leave just a tiny little highlight on his top wing. I'm trying to stand inside the lines. It's funny, some colors really like to bleed. And they like to jump outside the lines. I'm going to leave just another mark there. I'll go down do the rest of his body down here. So cute. All right. So that's those areas. I'm going to go in with a C8. And I'm just going to darken the areas where there's shadow. A little bit under his body, under his wings, maybe underneath kind of his wings to about there. Same on this side because it would be okay. My marker is going super wet looking, so that means it's gonna bloop. So, to prevent that, just pull off the other end, give it a few seconds, 
and it will take that excess ink back into the nib and back into the barrel of the marker. This will prevent that big bloop. And then you'll be scolding yourself for missing that detail and having this <laughs> horrendous blob on your work and you'll be so unhappy because you'll be like halfway through or almost all the way through in my case <laughs> most of the time I'm going to leave some of his hair on his head there a little bit later too we're going to go in and blend this because <laughs> it kind of looks funny right now just going to pull the darkness just a bit up there just gonna go down the sides of his belly and just kind of make it on the outside of his legs that he has. That okay, I'm going back with my C5 again, and we're just going to blend out those areas. And go right over top of them. I'm trying to keep those highlights. I can go back with a white marker or white pen and draw back in those details, but if I can avoid that, then that's even better. I'm going to just flick the dark color towards there, and I'm going to flick it up into his hair. And just soften those feather marks. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do um, a little bit of like creaminess around the edges. I'm going to use an E41. And I'm just going to draw kind of around all of those edges of his body just kind of acts kind of like a subtle shadow if that makes any sense go underneath his little wings there and because the heart is going to cast a little bit of a shadow I'm going to do under there too and I'm going to do a kind of like those C marks around his eyes, just kind of like I did here to shade. Just to push those eyes back. Okay, we'll do some orange accents on his, his feet and his beak because that's just too cute. I'm going to start with a YR31. Sorry, I'm just going to rotate here for a second. And put down a good base coat of both of those. And I think we'll add a little bit more vibrant orange. Just, I'm going to go with a Y35. Let's see, um, I'm going to go from the inside of his feet towards the outside. I'm just going to do one side of his beak like that. And we're also going to give him some cute little eyes, um, pupils around his eyes. Maybe I'll go bluish. Let's try B01. There. And that just makes him a little bit more colorful. I'll come back and do the heart in a little bit there. Okay, like I said, I'm keeping the coloring pretty simple. I'm going to leave it at that. I may come back and adjust the shadows, but right now, not worried about it. All right, um, let's go and work on the Meow Meow. I have a calico and I have a, a, an orange cat. So I tend to put orange cats. We're going to put an orange cat. Um, let's see. We're going to start with a base coat of YR20. All right, I don't know if you guys want a little bit closer view here. Again, I'm just going to put a base coat on just to get him colored. And then we can start putting detail onto him. I think I'll try to leave um, around where his whiskers would be. I'm going to do... Kind of like his muzzle, I guess that's what you'd call it. Um, I'm going to leave it white. My little fur babies is not white, but he has white accents on him. He has the funniest tail. Um, the top of his tail is orange and the underside of his tail is white. 
it's I think it's very bizarre for a cat I'm not sure if you have a cat that has a funny tail like that but I think it's funny I think it's odd all right base coat going on I'm gonna go under his chin there um, I'm gonna do all of his body orange um, I'm gonna leave his belly white just that little teeny belly there and then we're gonna leave his paws white but I'm going to take some of that orange and just feather it down onto his paws so his paws are white but um, not the top of them. All right, let's give him a little bit more color here. We want to kind of darken that orange. I'm going to go with a YR21. There we go. That's a nice orange. I'm going to go right over the majority of that color. I am going to leave that nice soft feather there that's um, in that lighter orange. Um, I'm going to go in on his face. I think we will leave some of the area around his face kind of that light color. So I'm just kind of drawing a line as to where I'm going to stop and start this particular shade of orange. There we go, just filling in the rest of that orange. I've left the top of the that ear, that nice soft orange as well. Now it's not too too far a blend but you could go in with your lighter orange and just blend out that line a little bit okay and let's give him some tabby or some stripes I don't want too dark an orange but I don't want like a funny looking orange all right so this is a YR15 or a YR15 and I'm going to start by, actually, maybe I'll start on his legs. And I'm just using just the very, very fine tip of the marker and giving him kind of a striated line to indicate that he's kind of straight here. What Do whatever you want to get your critters the color that you want. I'm going to do some kind of stripes on his face here. I'm going to do from his forehead kind of down towards his schnozzola. It's so cute. Um, I'm going to do a little bit on his ears. And then let's see, we'll do maybe a couple of stripes down from the ears. And how about partial ones kind of tucking in behind our little mouse fella? And kind of like I said, whatever boat your boat. Kind of cute, eh? Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. There, ta-da! We have a little orange kitty. Perfect! And let's do his eyeballs as well. How about a nice green? How about a YG13? The green always kind of offsets um, orangey tones nicely. I am going to go in and push that one tiny little bit of orange that I missed there. Um, if it can't push it, you can always take your marker and fix it with your marker. Um, just a touch of pink in the Meow Meow's ears. So cute. I'm going to leave some of it white. I'm good with that. 
Um, let's go on to our little mouse. Uh, I am have a tendency to go gray mice, so I'm going gray. Okay, W2. I'm going to do a base of W2. Don't forget his little tail. If you do notice that he has shrunk down quite a bit different sized than the rest of my critters, because, I mean, he's a mouse. <laughs> so I wanted him to be tiny. Yeah. Once again, I'm just uh, getting a good base coat down. I think I'll leave his muzzle white. Sorry, I'm skipping all over the place here. I may even go in with my grass colors again and flick up over them to indicate that they're, you know, they're standing in the grass. Yeah. Okay, base coat, base coat. I may have to go back and do the cat's tail. <laughs> I will in a second there. Just a minute. Let's finish our mouse here first. Okay, little mousy. That was a Y2. Let's go a Y4 for a tiny bit of shading. I'm going to go down his bum bum. I'm going to go to the base of his feet, a little bit behind his feet as well. Just um, ears, around there, around there, a little bit on his head. A little bit kind of around his cute little eyeballs there. Add a touch kind of behind the cup and underneath his hands or his paws. He's so cute. Maybe just a tiny bit to accentuate his muzzle. We'll do his eyebrows underneath one ear down the side. Just a touch. And... Oh, Maybe a tiny bit more on the ears. I'm um, going in with pink ears because that's just too cute. I think he's done. Let's go back to oh, go and fix this guy's tail here. So I'm just putting my light R20. We'll just add a little bit of shading with our R21 and then go in with our detail. Um, and I'm going to do any stripes on his tail. There we go. Really simple, really easy, quick. Um, oh, I am going to go in, just add a tiny bit of shading under his muzzle there. I really want to do some cute little cheeks. So for cheeks to make everything subtle, Go in with your blender pen, put a little bit of blender solution down, and then I'm just going to take that pink, that's my R20, and I'm going to push it down into the paper a little bit. So what it does is it becomes a little bit lighter. So you can do the same thing for actually any of your critters. Let's do some kind of pink cheeks on this little fellow while I got my blender and my R20. So I'm laying down some blender solution. This will help soften it and not make it have harsh edges. Make sure they sort of somewhat look even. And then go again over top that pink. And you can push it back multiple times if you want. But if you put that blender solution down first, it just uh, allows that pink to go on a little bit softer. Let's do our penguin too, because he's just too stinking cute. Okay, blender solution. Some good dabs. There we go. I mean, you could leave them absolutely um, stark little circles, because it's kind of cute, but because I'm going to make everything kind of matchy-matchy, <laughs> let's push those back. All right, 
we have our bear. That's we're gonna bear. Let's go um, same brown color family, uh, but just a little bit darker. Start with um, an E55. We're gonna put a base coat of E55 down. It's kind of a medium color brown. I am gonna go entirely over the ears in this case. Um, you could make these animals all kind of stuffies. Um, it would be really cute if you put stitch lines on them. I've done that with critters before to make them look like they've been sewn together like a stuffy would be. That's a cute way to, to look at them. Um, just putting our base coat in. Just throwing the color on. I'm going to leave his snout uncolored for the moment. Okay, get in and around all those elements. And if you decide to make your critters not so hairy, <laughs> if you want to just do flat coloring, do that. And if you're just learning and you want to do them with a little bit of hair texture, absolutely. I've done um, a few videos for Gerda Standard Designs with some tips and tricks to getting hair texture. If I remember, I will put a link below for you. Okay, base color of E55 is down. Let's go E57 to put our shading in. So, this time I'm kind of giving this little fella some texture. Going where I think he's going to have um, darker spots to begin with. <laughs> My cat is up on the bed behind me here. So a little bit of shading underneath the cake and his arm. I'm going to literally just paint it right on. Just a little bit on the muzzle, a little bit around here. I'm going to do the inset eyes again. Just putting little tiny C's around one side. Um, let's put a little bit of hairy texture on those cute little ears. Go a little bit on these ears. I'm not striving for perfection, people. <laughs> and get some fur. Oops, I hit the cake. Oh no. Get out the blender. And I'm going to attack that just before, just so it uh, doesn't sink in too badly. And Add a little bit more hair texture. Just adding a tiny bit of shadow in around that little bit of hair texture on his arm there. more lines for texture. I'm just going to put a little bit kind of to indicate um, the arches up to his brows. There we go. You can have fun with this. Whatever you kind of want to do here. Put a little bit more uh, shading behind that candle too. Okay, like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. That's uh, cute. He's cute. It's all good. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my R20 and just put a little bit of pink in his ears, but over that brown. 
so it's not like super duper obvious. Um, let's give him some colored eyes. Let's go back to the BG11. The same color that we used on our white bunny. Uh, I'm going to give him a darker muzzle. So I'm going to go, let's go E47. And I'm not going to give it any texture. I'm just going to color it flat. Like such. Uh, and I'm going to go darker black with his nose. I'm going to start with an um, and, and put in a highlight. So I'm just going to add color. Voila. Just going to go a little bit darker underneath. This is an N8. It's very, very subtle, the difference. <laughs> I mean, you guys probably can't even see it. Okay. So I think we are there with all of our critters. Looking pretty cute here. Now we need to figure out a color theme for um, like our heart balloons, our sign, and our cake, and our cup. Um, I think we should definitely have a red heart because, I mean, that just makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> so, going in with my R27 right rich I am going to leave a tiny bit of a highlight at the top there and red tends to be one of those colors that you cannot um, push back or get rid of so be careful with your reds I'm going to add a little bit of shadow with an R37 So underneath there, underneath there. Okay, so since we've got red, I say we do at least a red balloon. So let's do that. So I'm going to use exactly the same colors. R27. I'm going to do one of the ones in the foreground here. I've seen balloons done in many, many fashions here. I'm going to put in... My light reflection. This is my R27. Just putting my base down. You can redraw these back in with a white gel pen or a white paint marker, but I find them just as easy to draw in. Okay, and don't forget the piece that's tied at the bottom, and then just adding a little bit. Of shadow and then I'm going to blend it because that's kind of a harsh line there all right there we go I say we go with a red candle as well we got the markers out And just a tiny bit of a shadow. I'm not even going to blend it. Okay. Perfect. Um, what else? Maybe we'll go primary colors and go red, blue, and yellow. I'm going to start with an R04. For one of the other balloons, there won't be a highlight on this one because it is hiding. I'll put a little bit of shadow. I'm not sure if my Y08 is going to be dark enough. Oh, it should be. And a little bit of a shadow behind the red balloon as well. Go in and blend. All right. I'm going to go maybe a darker blue. Let's go with a starting one of B23. Sorry, my elbow's squeaking across the my desk here. There will be a tiny, tiny bit of a reflection with it sitting at the top. Okay, there's our base. 
Um, go with a B24 for our shadow. I'm trying to make the coloring very, very simple for you guys. Sometimes I even go with three or four colors and blend it out. But I really didn't want to do that with you guys today. I wanted to keep it super simple. And if you don't think that's blended enough, just go in with your lighter one and blend those lines. Okay, so there's that. Maybe we'll go with yellow icing. <laughs> so I'm going back to my OY04. And I'm, I'm going to color this all in, I think, here. There we go. Go into the candles and add some Y04. And then we're going to add our Y08 to get our shadows in our icing. And I'm going to just draw along that line there. Draw along the back of the icing and behind the candle to indicate that it's dipped down. Maybe a little bit of shading there. Okay. I don't think a blue cake will look very well. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go for a chocolate cake, I think. So this is E55. which I believe is the same color as our bear. <laughs> but it's okay, we'll differentiate in one second here. So I'm just going over those layers there now. Okay. Oh, I wonder if that is, I think that is also icing. Well, I'm gonna assume it's icing. <laughs> Because I don't have my image up in front of me. Okay, 55. Okay, I've got my 57 here. I'm going to add shading underneath the drips. Like such, down behind the mirror and that other drip of icing. A little tiny bit in front of his hand. Sorry, I'm going to rotate here. And then I'm going to take my... And just... Go down right down the middle of those layers of cake. Do a tiny, tiny, itty bitty one on the bottom. Then I'm gonna go back to my E55. And I'm gonna kind of add some speckling. It doesn't pop out totally great. Um, that's too dark. I'm gonna put some more E57 underneath his arm and underneath that cake just to separate those. So I'm just adding a tiny bit more shading. I'm gonna go in and do his feet too, underneath his arm. That'll work for now, right? Okay. I'm going to go in E57 and just add, because those other ones didn't quite show up, and just because they were too, well, they were the same color. I'd like a smaller um, thing, but I'm not worried about it for now. Okay, um, let's do his little cap. How about go back to the blue? Okay, so B23. Don't forget that um, inside lip. Okay. Like I said, super duper easy coloring today. Super simple. And I'm just gonna run it just down that one edge. We're going to deepen and darken it just a tiny bit more with a YG-17. Yep. Just subtle, subtle, subtle. And I'm going to go into just kind of those areas there. 
And I think I'll go back to my YG05. Just kind of draw texture sort of on those. So I'm just going to draw just something like that. All right, so his neckerchief, I will do, you know what, let's do red again. <laughs> it's just so cute. Okay, R27. Sorry, I am going to rotate this just because it's so much easier to color. Okay, um, I'm going to go in and do some shading with R37. I'm just going to make it look like there's kind of like a... I don't know, um, like a fold in the fabric. Do we have everything, everything but the sign, I think? Yeah, and because I want it to be legible, let's do maybe just a hint of yellow. Sorry, I am going to um, rotate here. So I think we'll just go in from the sides. Hey guys, I'm um, sorry I lost the very end of my footage here. So I just went in with my two yellow markers and flicked in and blended it a little bit so the sign was nice and legible. There's nothing worse than having something that you can't read. So here's my end card. What I did is I printed off a black strip that says wishing you a possum day and add a little bit of pattern paper behind it and voila we have one super cute birthday card. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. Join me again sometime soon. Bye guys. <laughs>